I've been looking forward to making this video for a while. Today I'm gonna to be discussing The Old Man and the Sea by Ernest Hemingway, which is one of the greatest short classics in American literature, but it's also just a great book. In this video, I'll be breaking down the story a little bit, analyzing it some, and equipping you with what you need to know to either approach the story for the first time or maybe think a little bit more deeply about it, revisit the material if you haven't read the book in a while. If you've been following along with the videos I've been making, you know that I'm a really big Ernest Hemingway fan. He's had a pretty big impact on me, both in terms of how I think and write, and also just kind of how I view the world. His perspective is so powerful that I feel like most people who read his stories are impacted by the way he writes in some way. His short declarative sentences are the most, it's the most imitated style, maybe of all time, I don't know about that. I'd have to think about that a little bit more before I make a claim that big. This particular story is about the will to live. It's about discipline. It's about determination. And it's also, for lack of a better phrase, about your why. It's about like what makes a man tick, what makes this man continue to do what he does day in and day out. The main character in the story, the old man, goes out to sea and in the story, he goes farther than he usually goes, and he goes farther out than most men go, most of the other fishermen in the village. And after a while, he ends up hooking a huge fish. And after he hooks that fish, he then needs to bring it back farther than he usually has to bring something that big back. This is a victory for him in the moment. He did what he set out to do, but on the way back, as he's coming home, sharks begin to eat the fish that he caught. He has wrecked himself physically. His hands are completely torn up and the meat of the fish is getting eaten away by these sharks so that by the time he comes back, all that's left is the skeleton of the fish for everyone to see. And so everyone knows that this old man just did something pretty legendary, but also he doesn't really have anything to show for it. He comes home and he's exhausted. And the last sentence in the story, which is one that I think about a decent amount is, the old man was dreaming about the lions. And so that's him asleep dreaming. And um, there's a boy in the story who kind of comes back and, and checks on him to see how he's doing. So what was the point? What did he get out of all that effort that he put into catching that fish? Basically nothing. He doesn't have anything of value to sell and show for it. But the character he's able to display is, to me, the point. This man is gonna go out and do what he does whether or not he catches anything, he went something like 82 days without catching a fish before he started to haul in this huge marlin or whatever it was, and uh, then the sharks ate it all up. And at the end, he's dreaming almost this biblical dream that to me is kind of alluding to his place in nature, his place on earth. The simplicity of Hemingway's prose always lends itself to open-ended thought. It really leaves you room to think pretty deeply because the sentences aren't distracting. You're not confused about the meaning of the story sentence by sentence. And to me, this particular story, The Old Man in the Sea, is like peak Hemingway style prose. He's got a lot of really good short stories, but The Old Man in the Sea of all of the books that I've read by him is the one that when I revisit it, I'm like, man, he really pured this one. Like for what it is, I can't find any flaws in this particular story. This story is definitely inspiring to me and it's kind of the literary equivalent of watching like a David Goggins interview or something like that. Like this guy, this fisherman in the story, he's going out and he is living an extreme and legendary existence without anyone watching. He doesn't do it for the attention. He's out there making his living the way he's always done it. And there is kind of a purity to the approach that he takes to going out there on his own. This story is certainly spiritual. It reminds me of kind of the simplicity of the arcs of Bible stories. And the best part, as I've mentioned before, is that you can read it all just in one afternoon. You can hold the whole story really freshly in your mind right after you've read it. And so you're not losing a lot of the details along the way. I highly recommend this one. If you've read it, let me know what you think. And if you got something out of this video, definitely consider subscribing. I'll be making book-related content 
on this channel indefinitely.